Uh, welcome back to Close Up. This was a live show. Point that out. Full show. Here to wrap things up, we have WMR political reporter John DeStaso and Andy Smith from the UNH Survey Center. Thanks for coming back in. Uh, John, we'll start with you. A couple of days left. First, yeah. uh, did the debate make a difference for anybody? And that you know, was when the ground game really counts. Well, you know, it'll be up to the voters whether it made a difference. I thought it was a tough night for Marco Rubio like a lot of other people did. Maybe not as tough as some of the national media are spinning it to be. Uh, I thought that Donald Trump did very well. Chris Christie did, did very well. Uh, you did very well, Josh. Oh, thanks. And, um, yeah. and I thought your questions were good. And I thought the eminent domain question really sparked a very good back and forth that helped, probably helped Jeb Bush make a, make a couple of points if people understand what eminent domain actually is out there. Yeah. Andy. I agree. The thing with a debate like that is we really won't know what impact it has had until we start counting the votes at the end, and then we'll make up some story to explain how the votes got from uh, sun Saturday to Tuesday. But I think it's really important to point out that year after year after year, that New Hampshire voters decide late. They decide late because they don't have to decide earlier. Right. Most voters here are going to be not getting anything out of uh, supporting somebody. Uh, so it's more of a, a, a vote that gets considered longer and they consider all of these things that occur over the last few days are yeah. very important and over the course of the last hour people have said hey i don't believe the polls or uh, whatever uh now i do want to point this out uh, john on the republican side we have donald trump yeah. whose ground game has been criticized has been bernie sanders on the other side front runner we don't know what his ground game looks no, like we just know it's masses now what, how organized those masses are you know i'm kind of like thinking about uh, the Lord of the Rings where the orcs come over the hill, you know, there's just <laughs> millions of them. And, but do they know exactly where, where to go? You know what I'm saying? Where the- I do actually. Where, 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 the, where the Clinton people um, may not have, maybe they don't have the numbers, but they have the, they have the strategy. That's, that's my take. You know, Bernie Sanders could, could just, you know, blow me out of the water for, for that take too. Uh, I think that the, Democratic race is going to be a lot. No offense, Andy, but I think it's going to close. It's already closing in your recent poll. So I do. I, I, I think that too, and you probably do agree with that. Um, and even Bernie Sanders, a moment ago, says, "Look, I get it. I know that I got to get people to, to the polls." And basically, he's imploring people to get there. Let's talk about the Republican side. Is anybody, uh, Andy, better positioned than anybody else when it comes to the ground game? I'd say that if I were to rate the ground games, and it's always a difficult thing to do because. Everybody's going to say we got a great ground, ground game. Sure. Exactly. But I'd say that the, the Bush people, Kasich, I have, people have long time experience in New Hampshire running organizations and organizing campaigns. Uh, a step below them would be, I think, uh, Christian Rubio. Cruz is a little bit interesting because he's invested a lot of money in identifying voters and targeting them. It's maybe the stealth ground game, the one we really don't know about. Right. And I agree with John that um, the Trump ground game remains to be seen, I think. Yeah, I think there are some very good people in the Trump organization, and I'm not saying that they don't have a ground game. I think that they have a better one than, than it's being made out to be. But it's going to be very important, you know, to actually get all those people who have been waiting in line, been at all, thousands of people have been at his, uh, at his uh, rallies to, to actually get out there and vote. I think they can do it. I don't see, I don't see uh, any upset right here in terms of the actual one, two, you know, three with Trump being on top. It'll, it'll be a matter of the margin. So the key for Trump is to be able to identify those people who came mm -hmm. to his events because they really support Donald Trump versus the people who came to those events because they wanted to see Donald Trump, uh, the apprentice boss. And Cruz has a very dedicated slice of people. So I'm not saying that, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a huge group like it was in Iowa. But the people who follow Ted Cruz are going to come out. There's absolutely no question about that. I was not in New Hampshire. We only have about 30 seconds to go. Any bold predictions for Tuesday? Well, I think the one bold prediction that I'm going to make is that um, it's going to be a very close race on the Democratic side. I think Bernie Sanders is going to win, but we're going to have a repeat of the comeback kid where Hillary Clinton's going to be close enough where she can proclaim victory. we got to run. All right, thanks very much, guys. Appreciate your time, and thank you very much for joining us for this live edition of Close Up New Hampshire. We'll be back here, of course, next week. Until then, we hope all this coverage has helped you. Have a great day.